This lesson deals with series and parallel, capacitance and inductance. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 6, starting at page 19. Suppose that we take n capacitances and put them in parallel. You can replace this by a single capacitance whose value is the sum of the individual capacitances. And why would that be true? Well, suppose that we apply a voltage and a current flows. Well, again, we'll assume a passive sign convention for our parallel capacitances. There's a current in each capacitance. Let's call them I1 through I sub n. And the current that's entering is the current that leaves. But what is the current in this capacitance? Well, it's equal to C1 times dV dt, where V is the voltage across capacitance number one. But for capacitance number two, it's just C2 times the same derivative, likewise all the way through C sub n. So you could pull out the C1 through C sub n and call that C equivalent. Suppose we take n capacitances and we put them in series. Then you can replace them by a single capacitance whose value is 1 over the sum of the reciprocal of the individual capacitances. Why would this be true? Again, let's apply a voltage and a kernel flow. Again, we'll assume a passive sign convention. And there'll be a voltage across each capacitance. The rise in voltage here would equal the drops of 1 through n. But what is the voltage across the capacitance? Well, it's the integral of the current that's flowing through it, say from T0 to T, then divided by C1 plus whatever initial condition we have. Current is the same for C2 all the way through C sub n. So you could factor out the integral of I of x dx. What you're left over with then is the sum of the reciprocal of the capacitances. You also have the sum of the initial conditions. And so you could replace this by a single capacitance whose value is the reciprocal of this summation plus the sum of the initial conditions. And that's the proof of series capacitances. Suppose that we take n inductances and put them in series. Then you can replace that by a single inductance whose value is equal to the sum of the individual inductances here. Again, why would that be true? Well, again, supply a voltage and a current will flow, and we'll create a drop across each inductance with a passive sign convention. And so the rise in voltage here would equal the drop across L1, L2, all the way through L sub n. But what's the voltage across an inductance? It's equal to L di dt. In this case, it's going to be L1 times di dt for the first inductance. L2, same current though, so di dt again, all the way through L sub n times di dt. So you could pull out the di dt and left with the sum of the inductances. And so we call that L equivalent. And that's the proof for series inductance. Suppose that we take n inductances in parallel. We can replace this by a single inductance whose value is 1 over the sum of 1 over the inductances. Okay, suppose you apply a voltage here, current flows, assuming a passive sign convention, and we'll have a current in each inductance. Current that enters equals the current that leaves, and we'll call that I1 through I sub n. What is the current through an inductance? Well, it's the integral of the voltage across it, dx, divided by the inductance plus the initial condition. Same is true for L2, we're going to be dividing by L2, but the voltage is the same as the previous inductance. Plus, we can have an initial condition for that. Second inductance, and we keep doing this all the way through n. So what's common here is the integral of V of x dx, and then what's multiplying it is 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2, all the way through to 1 over L sub n. We also have the sum of the initial conditions. So you can replace this by a single inductance, whose value is 1 over this quantity, which is right here, plus the sum of the initial conditions. And that's the proof for parallel inductance. Now looking back at all this, we see that series inductance and parallel inductance is very much like series resistance and parallel resistance. For capacitance, we see a reciprocal relationship. Then when we have capacitances in parallel, they add, and when they're in series, we're taking 1 over the sum of 1 over. And this is a lesson dealing with series in parallel capacitance and inductance.